Hi, welcome to Impact Church. May we see today another wonderful opportunity to draw ever closer to His grace and His light. Good morning, Impact Church. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I trust that the Lord has been blessing you with joy in your everyday life as you deal with many different things and many different people. Uh, we are praying for you every day. We are praying that you are having the time of your life, no? whatever you're going through. <laughs> uh, I'm happy to see Lance Cobarubias. <laughs> si two chains, <laughs> si Eugene Francisco, uh, <laughs> si Jerome Yushang, matagal ka na dito, <laughs> si Jerome Yushang, tsaka si Carlo Pendor. Uh, nakasama po namin sila uh, last year and several years before that sa Kirino High School ministry namin before. And I'm very happy to see them here. And hearing that song, naalala ko si EJ. Uh, we used Hindi naman, how many times do we perform that? Once lang naman, di ba? Itong song na to. Ah, twice, twice, right. We performed that song twice. She's a very good singer, no? Napakaganda ng boses niya. Sample. <laughs> Sample. Why not? <laughs> uh, and of course, yan yan. <laughs> si Josh, nakita ko na dito before, tsaka si Tito Faith. But yan yan, uh, this is the first time that I'm... Uh, worshiping with you. It is indeed a blessing to be able to speak in your midst once again. I'm very thankful to the Lord for this opportunity. <coughs> Shall we pray before we begin? Let me pray for you as well. Uh, Father, thank you for this beautiful morning that you have given to us, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the people that you have led to this worship hall, Father. We are here for you and you alone, Father. Our prayer is that you would open the hearts of these people, Father. Uh, even myself, Father. Allow, Lord, this message to speak to me as it speaks to your people as well, Father. May it mirror your heart, Father. There is nothing that we would want the church to hear but your voice alone, Father. Bless us this morning, Father. Open our hearts and our minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Our to topic is harnessing technology for missions. Why is the church interested with technology? Let me ask you several things. Sabihin niya sa akin kung, kung familiar kayo dito sa mga to. Have you heard of Silicon Valley? Yes. Sinong familiar? Sa Silicon Valley, okay? Silicon Valley is a portion uh, of the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, in, in California, dito ginagawa, or dito nagsimula ang revolution ng technology, especially internet. Connectivity revolution, dito siya nagsimula. So dito sa Silicon Valley, meron silang tinatawag na Pirates of the Silicon Valley. Hindi Caribbean, Pirates of the Silicon Valley. At kasama dito sa mga Pirates na to, si Steve Bosniak. Have you heard that name? Steve Bosniak? Okay, si Leo. Ang laki ng nod eh, okay lang pa si Steve Bosniak. <laughs> si Steve Jobs. Of course you know Steve Jobs, right? The late Steve Jobs. If Steve Jobs was the mouth and the brain, Bosnia was the hands. Siya yung gumagawa ng lahat ng pinapramis. He was also the brain. Steve. Huh? He was the brain. He was the brain, actually. He was the brain behind the brain. Yeah. He was the brain behind the mouth. That was Steve Jobs. Si Steve Bosnia started doing computers or making computers in the garage of Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs would promise computers. He would take orders. Sabi niya, o oh, kaya namin i-deliver yan. When in fact, Bosniak was not even able to produce one computer yet. <laughs> so si Bosniak yung taga-problema ng mga pinapromise ni Steve Jobs. But you know, decades later, tingnan mo yung, ano, yung, yung naging fruit ng relationship na yun. It was not a good relationship altogether. It was up and down. But then again, uh, because of these people, Ibang iba na yung mundo natin ngayon. Of course, ang pinakasikat na pirata ng Silicon Valley, si Bill Gates. At siya ang pinakapirata sa kanilang lahat. Ang dami niyang ninakawan na hindi siya nakasuhan. Yun si Bill Gates. He used to sleep uh, sa opisina niya because he could not uh, afford an apartment to pay for an apartment. So doon sila natutulog sa apartment. He approached IBM. He approached Apple. Apple became a, uh, a company before they did 
before Windows, before Microsoft. Ang ginawa niya, kinuha niya yung technology ng IBM, kinuha niya yung technology ng Xerox, yung nag-invent ng mouse, kinuha, kinuha niya yung technology ng uh, Apple, which was then, if I'm not mistaken, Lisa, yung computer na ginawa nila Steve Lisa Jobs. No? Ni Lisa yung unang computer na ginawa, personal computer. So ang ginawa ni uh, Bill Gates, he took all these technologies, studied them, reverse engineered them, added a few flares, and voila, Microsoft was born. Isn't that person a pirate? <laughs> but you know what? This pirate is one of the biggest givers in the world right now. Grabe ang uh, ginagawa nila sa Africa. How they give so much money. Siya ang taga-introduce ng ministries to Africa right now in terms of wealthy people. Kumakausap siya ng mga tao na Okay, what will you do with your money? Why not give it to a better cause, which is the feeding programs in Africa? He and his wife. So these people are the pirates of the Silicon Valley. The church is very interested in technology for many, many reasons. But it has its basis in the Bible. It has its basis on our mission. That's why we are interested. Jesus is the revelation of God to the world. Sinabi ni Jesus sa mga tao, I and the Father am one. Those who have seen the Father have seen me. Before this time, before Jesus Christ, God was a a being who do you not who you do not really know entirely. But because of Jesus Christ, so much of who God is was introduced to the people. Because of Jesus, hindi na natin kailangan maging cryptic at maging uh, takot dun sa fact na sabihin na we know God in a personal way. Because Jesus introduced God to man. Jesus is the revelation of God. So the problem right now is the world is saying no to Jesus. The world is saying no to a God he does not know. The world is saying no to a God he does not understand. So our primary work is not in the telling in itself. The telling that God is good and God is salvation and God is truth. That's not only the only primary focus of the church right now. Our problem lies beyond that in the breaking of the walls that are keeping people from fully accepting the truth that is God. Itong walls na to, it can be because of traditions, old, very old traditions that cannot be uh, broken. This can be because of experiences of people, but these walls are there. And it is keeping them from fully knowing God. So, what they are actually saying no to is a version of God in their head. But they are not saying no to the true God. That is where we come in. Remember that your friends, I had a friend in UP, uh, she was a major in molecular uh, biology. Molecular biology. She was an agnostic. Sabi niya, I know God exists. Alam ko na may Diyos. Pero hindi ko siya pinapangalanan. I do not believe that you can have a relationship with God. Alam kong nandyan lang siya. Para siyang yung universe. The universe is grand. It connects everything. Everything is dependent on it. But it cannot have a relationship with you. So ganun yung view niya of God. But we know that God is not like that. Especially John 3.16 tells us, that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in that, in Him, in Jesus Christ, will have everlasting life. They know a very, very different God. And we are part of the reason why they cannot get to know God. Let me talk about the internet for a while. I'm a millennial. <laughs> Kami yung mga unang-unang millennial, my kuya and I. Border, border millennial. Oh, border, di ba? 1983 daw nagsimula. 
Uh, that's the birth year of my kuya, si Brian, wala siya dito. Ako, pinanganak ako ng... Basta <clears throat> mali. Ako, sumabay. Hindi ko na masabi ito yun. <laughs> so, let me talk about the internet for a while. Oh, may tulog pa! <laughs> may tulog pa. But before that, let me introduce to you, or let me tell you the verse that we are hinged on this morning. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Very simple. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on Him whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in Him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? It's, it follows a simple line of reasoning, no? Simple logic. O paano nga ba nila maririnig kung walang magsasabi sa kanila? Very simple. Our task begins with helping people break down the walls that are keeping them from believing in God. Mostly it is due to a wrong perspective of who God is brought by unquestionable static traditions in the church. Remember that not all unbelievers are alien to the church. They have been alienated by the church. That's a more proper term. Hindi lahat ng taong hindi naniniwala sa Diyos, hindi pa nakakarinig ng magandang balita. Many of the people who do not believe in Jesus reject Him because of the church, because of their experiences of the church or a deeply painful experience they have in the past that they somehow attribute to God. A lens, a very dark lens that is keeping them from seeing the light of God. Okay. Meron pang sound effects. Okay. Meron clear line dito. Look at the internet na kinalakihan ko. Look at this side, this side. <laughs> Alam niyo pa ba itong mga ito? Kayo, yung mga high school. Alam niyo ano yung MIRC? I love the MIRC. MIRC, grabe. Wala pang messenger dati. MIRC pa kami. Pero huwag ka, dyan pinanganak ang EB. What's EB? Eyeball. Eyeball. <laughs> Online communities. Merong EB for music, merong EB for a certain part in Blue Ridge dati. Doon ako member kaya nakikita-kita kami before for um, breakfast at McDo, Katipunan. EB, eyeball. Ito, ICQ. Nakita niyo na ba itong ICQ? Old school na old school. <laughs> old school, na old school. Before Messenger, before Yahoo Messenger, before Facebook Messenger, yung alert ng Facebook Messenger ngayon, ano lang eh, bell lang eh. Ding! Dati, it was... That's ICQ. No? Uh, ito, do you know what this is? It's a, it's a modem. <laughs> no, hindi na natin masyado nakikita ito eh. Kasi ang modem ngayon, wireless na. Nasa isang corner na lang siya ng bahay. Dati, nasa taas yan, nasa tabi ng computer, sa taas ng CPU ng computer. At yung computer na yun, dun ka lang pwede mag-internet sa buong bahay. Because you have to be connected to a wire. Wala pang wifi dati. So ito, no? Uh, do you know what this is? ISP <laughs> Bonanza. Exactly. Dial up internet. Do you know what dial up internet is? <laughs> Sobrang bata tao dyan. Tapos pag ka ng... Connected ka na. You know, giving music to your ears. Yeah, you're connected then. Okay? Of course, the lines look like this. Duk Nukem? Naabutan niyo ba yung Duk Nukem? Grabe. <laughs> Before internet, hindi pa uso ang internet, meron kami ginagawa with phone lines. Nakalimutan ko na yung term eh, hyper something. Na ang ginagawa mo, you connect your, uh, your, your phone, your landline, to your computer, tapos kukunin mo yung address niya nung kalaban mo, tapos magkukunin kayo sa ibang bahay. Wala pang internet nun, ginagawa na namin yung ano, yung ginagawa ninyo ngayon na uh, online gaming. Uh, we, we created networks of our own dati. We were also into tap dialing. Kasi merong codes sa phone. 
So what you do is take off the handle kasi hindi ko na alam kung paano gagawin yan kasi wireless na yan. Pero dati, nung may, yung pag pinipindot mo yung dial tone, dati, tatanggalin mo yung handset, tapos merong code. Tat, 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 tat. Oo, oh, yun. That's numbers. Equal to something yun. Tapos may code yun. Para makakuha ka ng internet na uninterrupted. Tsaka mas mabilis. Pero it only worked half of the time. Kasi wala kang gauge. Hindi mo alam kung gumagaling yung ginagawa mo. Hindi mo alam kung tama. Malalaman mo na lang pag mali kapag na-disconnect ka kasi may tumawag sa call waiting. The, the young people do not understand that now. That's why I'm very happy for you. <laughs> Hindi ko alam yun. Hindi ko alam yun. Ako din eh, kinento lang sa akin kasi si Justin Bieber na inabutan ko. Justin Bieber Now, we are always connected. 24-7, we are connected. Hindi na natin kailangan yung Wala nang ganun. When you put on your cell phone, when you turn it on in the morning, you're connected. You even have messages pending reading. Ready na para sa iyo. Uh, you have FaceTime, of course you have Facebook, you have Instagram. What's this? Spotify. What's this? Messenger. What's this? Nakasulat Tsaka of course? Netflix. Netflix. Ano yung mas murang version ng Netflix? Netflix. 1,300 something annual subscription na. Uh, wala po akong kinikita sa pagsabi ng sa inyo. <laughs> Ginagamit kayo pang, ano, pang relax ng mind. We are always connected. Hashtag accept friend request. Hashtag follow us. Hashtag like us on. Yan ang ano natin. That's our language today. There are advantages of doing internet missions. We will talk about internet missions because the internet is something that was being created that we can use as a church to reach out to people. Sabi ni What's the Who's the writer of the book? Si ano? Si Edmund Chan. Sabi ni Edmund Chan, there are four advantages of internet missions. First, it facilitates contact across geographic boundaries. In the latter half of the 20th century, it has closed geographical distances for industry, education, and even the church. Dadagdagan ko to. It has closed the distance between families as well. Uh, two days ago, I was uh, having dinner with a couple of my high school classmates. Si Jonas Prer. Ang nagpaalam ako sa kanya, sabi ko, gagamitin ko yung kwento mo sa sermon ko. Pumayag naman siya. Uh, her story is like this. Meron siyang father. Of course, meron din siyang mother. <laughs> Ito yung story ng parents niya. Uh, several years ago, si Jonas Prer uh, got a message from a Another asprer. Another asprer. Sabi niya, hi, ganito, ganyan. Meron palang asprer dyan sa Marikina. Taga dito kami sa isang probinsya. Nagulat lang kami na meron palang asprer dyan. Tapos, ah, oh, okay, hi, hi. Respond siya ng gano'n. Tapos later on, sabi niya, sino yung lolo mo? Tapos nagsabi siya ng pangalan. Uy, kapangalan ng lolo ko. Sino yung lolo mo? Ayun nga, magkapangalan ng lolo natin. Makasabi ko lang. Makasabi ko lang eh. <laughs> Ano pangalan ng lolo natin? Ang sabi niya, baka kapangalan lang. Kasi posible naman eh. Baka kapangalan lang. So tinanong niya, kailan yung birthday? Naku, yun na. Magkapareho sila ng birthday. Saan pinanganak? Naku, yun na rin. Magkapareho sila ng lugar ng kapanganakan. Kapanganakan. Finally, they sent pictures of their lolos to one another. It's the same person. Ito yung story. Ito palang lolo nila uh, during the Second World War. <laughs> Ganda ng story, pang palabas talaga. During the Second World War, no, nahiwalay siya sa family niya. Napunta siya sa Samariata, Samar Lente. Tapos, na-injure siya doon. Nagkaroon siya ng amnesia. Oh, teleserye. 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 
Jacqueline. And he fell in love with a nurse na nag-alaga sa kanya. Panghapon yun ah. After decades, they found out that the family was a lot bigger than they knew. I imagine mo, growing up, akala mo kayo lang. Pero, surprise, may dalawa pang kapatid. That was the... Yun yung story nung tatay. Pero may nanay din si John, di ba? Ito naman yung story, ah. Oh, no. May isa pa, iba, iba talaga, pang ano talaga, pang Academy Awards talaga. <laughs> si John, ay ah, yung mom ni John, ang alam nila, their entire life, dalawa lang silang magkapatid. They found out, Later on, dahil may nag-communicate sa kanila, ganun din, meron pa ng dairo. Dairo naman yung last name nila. May dairo pala dyan sa lugar na yan. They found out that itong father, nung pinangalak sila, so this is not another family, ito yung mas malupit eh. Itong mga magkakapatid na to, full. Full sibling sila. Hindi sila half. Nung, uh, there was a point in their lives, nagkaguna yung marriage nila, na yung dalawang panganay, kinuha ng nanay pabutang Manila. Yung mga bata, hindi nila maalala to, Hindi nila alam na may iba silang kapatid. Itong pangatlo, naiwan doon sa probinsya. Nung tatay. So, hiwalay. Tapos yung pang-apat, ito yung pinakamalupit. Tinangay ng kasama sa bahay. Huh? Yes. Oh. Na-attach. Na-attach yung katulong. <laughs> Na-attach yung katulong. Dear heart, dear heart. Grabe to. So yung classmate ko, one day, nagsisearch, I actually hindi yung classmate ko, kapatid niya, was searching for dairos. Tapos nahanap nila yung dairo. The thing is, ang ang benefit dito, ang ang magandang bagay, hindi pinalitan ng katulong yung pangalan. The thing is, that person was a junior. So hindi mo siya madinay na siya yung taong yun. So nahanap nila, in short, nahanap nila, Uh, two, two nights ago, pinakita sa akin yung pictures. They had dinner together. Uh, they now know that they are a bigger family. At halatang halata sa mukha, sabi nga ni tita, nung nakita na yung kapatid niya, hindi na siya nagtaka, wala nang doubt whatsoever. Yung mukha nila parehong pareho. As in, hindi mo matitinay. So imagine the power of internet. No? Grabe yun. That's one family, actually, two families reunited just because of this kind of Connection. Uh, a second advantage. Uh, yeah, connection. The second is accessibility. Despite the initial costs, computer-driven communication is inexpensive, it's instant, it's interactive, and it's flexible. So the world is a very different world. Napakadami ng kondisyon ng buhay ngayon. At iba-iba na yung pamamaraan ng pamumuhay natin. We cannot expect people to connect to us 24-7 in a way that we want them to. The thing is, the church must respond to how the world lives now. We cannot say na, bakit dati we had prayer meetings at 5 a.m. in the morning before the men went to church? Then do it now and you'll lose members. <laughs> Because Metro Manila is simply different. The conditions of life here is simply different. We cannot demand so much because Jesus, in reality, Jesus spoke and lived with His disciples according to their needs as well. This is something that we must understand about Jesus. Yes, He commanded And yes, He asked so much of His disciples in terms of their dedication and in terms of their lives. Pero kailangan natin hindi makalimutan that Jesus was also the person who had dinner with Matthew's friends. Naalala niyo, I gave a message on Matthew before. Matthew was a tax collector. Sinabi ni Jesus, come and follow me. Matthew followed. Later after that, the narrative, the next scene in the narrative, found them in a room. Actually, Matthew's house. He had dinner with sinful people. He had dinner with tax collectors. He had dinner with thieves, with corrupt officials. Nung nakita sila ng Sadducees and Pharisees, bakit ganun yung master niya? Why does he drink and eat with sinners? 
That was who Jesus was. You see Jesus. This is something that we we seem to forget. We seem to forget this. Okay. The third, it enables global ministry. <laughs> It enables the hosting of ministry and ev evangelistic websites globally at minimal costs. It allows us to connect to greater uh, to, to, to the world, actually. Yung kinakanta natin kanina, We Speak to Nations, sing isa. Ito sing isang song, Pastor yes. Jerry. Ano to the ends of the earth. That cry, actually, that battle cry is actually easier in the 21st century than in the 20th or the 19th century, you know? It allows us to go to the corners of the world without actually going there. The fourth is person-to-person -person communication. Compared to other electronic media, the internet can facilitate person-to-person -person communication even though the parties may have never met and are thousands of kilometers away. So the church must be ready, must be prepared, must actually adjust its sales to cater to these kinds of ministries. There is an important note. Uh, sinasabi natin that it is not really required for one person to be with another person, to minister to them. In so much, that is true. In so much, that is true. But it is important to know that there is no substitute to physical togetherness. Although in the globalized world where it is simply trivial to keep tabs on who leaves the country or who stays, we cannot succumb to the current physicality of our world that would find us separated and miles away from each other. We cannot say simply, I surrender because this person is going away from this place. Uh, in February, I was in General Santos. I was speaking to a young pastor who said it's very impossible for us to do ministry with the young adults because they simply leave. Now, siya, nililimit niya yung ministry ng church. Ang sinasabi niya, ito lang ang kaya namin gawin because this is the reality of our church. That's quite sad. When you limit the reality of, uh, when you limit, natatawa si Salvi, kilala niya kung sino itong pasal na to. That's really sad. No? If the church stops inventing or innovating in ways that it can reach its flock. Shall we say, I give up? Shall we say, I'll pray for you, but goodbye? Shall we say those things? No. Sabi ni Garth Brooks, Garth Brooks is a novelist, he's not a Christian uh, writer, but there is so much value in what he said in his book, The Art of Racing in the Rain. I've shared this with the young adults before. He said, the physicality of our world is only a hindrance to us when the will is weak. When the will is weak. This is even true where, when we hold fast to the promise of God. In Matthew 28, 20, it says, Behold, or lo, I will be with you to the end of age. God enables. The Spirit strengthens. The Spirit touches people. It is important that we remember that this promise is given in the context of missions and not only Christian living. The context is a mission. I will be with you as you reach out to people. I will go ahead of you as you reach out to my people. The point is this. We do not have to look at the internet as a substitution. Although in many cases, uh, in many cases it is we must look at it as an enabling tool. An enabling tool that would allow us to do our ministry. According to, <laughs> may talaga. According to uh, Ed Stetzer, Ed Stetzer is a missiologist. No? Sabi niya, in his ministry, technology enables communication. Through Facebook and Twitter or through church blog, Ed Stenser communicates directly with the people in the congregation throughout the day and week. This is another reality of the church. Our society does not allow pastors to be full-time anymore. The churches cannot support it anymore. The engineering firm, construction firm, yun ang negosyo niya. 
VCF have many pastors. They, they have many pastors who are by vocation now. They have works, they have businesses during the day, but they minister to their flocks. And technology is one of the reasons why they can effectively minister to their flocks without physically being with them and allowing them to feed their families as well. Second, technology enables community. In the case of Ed Stetzer, technology enhances communications and hence a greater sense of community that doesn't demand proximity. Proximity, proximity isn't entirely required for community. Take, for example, our online chat that wakes me up at the middle of the night or in the morning with hundreds of notifications na ang hirap-hirap ng balikat. Ano kaya pinag-uusapan nito mga ito? Yung, yung impact... <laughs> impact family chat? Grabe, minsan. Ano ba kaya pinag-uusapan? Sobrang ano, dami oh. Hindi ko na mabalikan minsan. There is an online community. Eh, proximity is not always the key for that. Constant communication, however, is... Hindi ka sama si Tito Bobo, pero lagi ko nakikita si ano eh. Si Tito Jean nagsasabi na love, tama na love. Tulog na love. Buhayin. Technology enables discipleship. A certain church has an application. Meron din sa Pilipinas, several churches have this. Uh, which people access to the sermon outline. And they use their phones or iPads to follow along the take and take notes. They encourage congregations to tweet questions during their services, which they try to answer. We can do this. We can do this. We actually have our sites up that can accommodate this kind of uh, ministry. All these are tools to enhance discipleship. Technology, though, is not the goal. The goal is to enable the church's mission to make disciples of all people groups. So technology is a means. It's not the end in itself. The end is that we disciple. We continue on discipling even with the rigorous and so uh, even with the demands of the world. Even with the demands of the world. There are also hindrances. Okay? There are also hindrances to internet missions. The first is personal resistance to change. I don't think we have much of this here. But I'm putting it here because, you know, this is the reality of the 21st century church also. Meron siyang difficulty na embrace ang technology fully. So, for the 20th and 21st century, it's the internet. Sa time natin, it's the internet. It's social media, it's Facebook, it's Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and so on. But 500 years ago, it was the technology, the relatively new technology of printing. Yung movable type na printing. Hindi yung press lang. So it made printing a lot faster. Martin Luther took note of this technology and he used it. That in three years, from 1517 to 1520, he was able to produce 30 books and pamphlets. Grabe, grabe yun. What are these 30 books and pamphlets? What did this ultimately do? You know what? It helped usher in the entire Western Europe. It helped usher the entire Western Europe out from the Dark Ages. Because of this technology. At our time, it's internet before it was printing. There is no reason why we cannot do the same with the technology that God made available for us today. The second is, the fallacy of used for evil, therefore evil. Fallacious yun. Para sabihin na, ay, ginagamit sa masamaya, therefore, in itself, it is intricately evil. That's a fallacy. Uh, there was a time in, sorry, in Kamakop churches, <laughs> not instruments, other than the piano, yeah. no? other than the piano or the organ, were considered to be worldly instruments of the devil. 
<laughs> there are still churches who are like that. Especially, no, joke. I grew up, I, I experienced this actually. I grew up in a time when suggestion boxes would have slips that said, can we do away with the guitars and the drums and just sing hymns with the piano? Tanggalin na rin natin yung drums and the guitars. Hindi kasi siya nakakabless. Uh, ang problema ko nun, drummer ako. <laughs> diba? So every time may ganung slip, ako yung uh. <laughs> but you know what? As we have seen, God has used these very instruments that were then branded as inadequate to reach out to a new generation of believers who gave, gave their lives to Jesus Christ. These very instruments. I have a friend who is a priest. He's now in Tala, but he's a uh, he's a native of Congo in Africa. Sabi niya, nung pagdating niya dito sa Metro Manila, nanibago siya. For a year, nahirapan siyang mag-serve sa Mass as a brother. Because in Congo, they had dances and very lively music during their Mass. Ha- have we attended Mass? Lahat tayo, no? We've attended Mass before. Very solemn, very quiet, very careful ng galaw. Sa kanila, it's the exact opposite. But it's exactly the same. In terms of the purpose, it's the same. The terms of who gets the credit, who gets the glory, it's the same. It's God. So the question is this. Isn't our God the God who used the deadly serpent to heal so many during the time of the Israelites in the wilderness? The serpent who killed. The serpent who caused so much trouble. Then again, God used that very serpent to heal so many. Isn't our God the God who used even the cross, a weapon for suffering and shame, to save us? To give out a message of love, of forgiveness, and eternal life. Yes, He is this God. He is the very, the same God who did this. And we are thankful that our God is an awesome God who is persistent in His love for His people. He will use technology. There is nothing that he cannot use for his own glory. The third is, yeah, ito uh, medyo ano, sometimes uh, we have to check ourselves. Having an unapproachable stance in social media, ano yung ibig sabihin ng unapproachable stance? Thank you, Gerard. Reality, yung mga tao, ayaw nila na nasasabihan sila, na may mali sila. In reality also, yung mga tao, ayaw nila ma-feel na mas mababa sila sa'yo. That's a reality. Sometimes, we behave in social media in a way that we lift ourselves up. Sometimes, we behave in a way that separates us from people. And this is simply what I mean by an unapproachable stance in social media. This is the reality. Jesus himself was very approachable to everyone. He was not the kind of teacher who did not sit with the sinful. In fact, he was the kind of teacher who sat with a woman na dapat hindi nalalapitan ng male, ng mga rabbi during the time. He sat down uh, or even, no, he even spoke for a woman who was about to be stoned to death because of promiscuous activities. He was that kind of person. And what are we called to do to be his disciples? To live as he lived. To walk as he walked. To be exactly that. And, you know, I'm not saying that the truth should be veiled about ourselves, about our humanity, about who we are, about what we believe. Of course not. Of course not. But the goal is this. We must be people whom people can approach. Spark a conversation. Make yourself available by making yourself approachable. That's the point. 
Number four is a shortage on credibility. Online life. Shortage in credibility. We call them keyboard warriors. <laughs> Remember? Gangster, <laughs> say. Keyboard warriors. And virtual split personalities. <laughs> virtual split personalities. An online Harvey Dent for DC fans, right? Hindi niyo alam, si Leo lang tumawa. Tsaka si Jethro. Harvey Dent is two-faced. Kalaban ni Batman. Kalaban ni Batman, no? They are, they, are, they are people who claim to be Christians but have far less moral standards when online. They are people who post sensual selfies or being photographed with alcohol <laughs> they are the ones who blurt out emotional explosions of anger and angst on personal posts. Sometimes even using explicit language. Only some of the things that will make us less credible online. These are just some of the things. I'm not telling you that you are this person. <laughs> I'm not telling you so that I can point fingers on anyone. I'm telling you so that you may manage yourself. Right? Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouth, but only such as good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace, that it may give grace to those who hear that it may give grace to those who hear. That's very beautiful. So think this way. Uh, there is no dichotomy between the real world and the virtual world. Walang hate, walang split. It's the world. The virtual world and the real world, they are one and the same. People will not be understanding or forgiving of our online behavior. They will simply say, that's the kind of person he or she is. Yes. Ganun lang siya. Hindi nila sasabihin na, ah, sa online lang yan, pero mabait na tao yan. Masasabihin nila, ah, ganun pala talaga siya. Ganun pala talaga siya. Brothers and sisters, let me encourage you. Use technology. Blessing ni Lord yan. The Protestant leaders at the time of Martin Luther saw movable printing as a blessing to the church. As we must view the internet, social media, and other virtual or technological media as a blessing to the 21st century church today. Let me give you a conclusion through a story. Narinig niyo na ba itong The Tale of the Old Broken Plate? Wala pa, hindi ba? Ika-copyright ko pa lang yun. Hindi, hindi. Papanotaryo. Papanotaryo. Kasi yung lawyer dyan. <laughs> Let me tell you the story of the plate. There was a... Uh, There's a woman who owns this very old plate, ceramic plate with gold edgings and very intricately painted designs. This plate was handmade by her mother more than five decades ago, more than 50 years. It was made with so much love and thoughtfulness. The plate was made with special ceramics, silver edgings, and intricately painted patterns. The mother created every part of the plate to reflect her own beauty. Every brush stroke, every edging, every inlay was put there so methodically, so carefully, and patiently. When the plate was finally finished, the mother looked at it and said, It is very good. It is very good. The woman, knowing the cost of the plate, knowing its true beauty, when in the many decades that it was being used, caused it to have scratches, 
chips, and lining tears. The woman loved to host banquets in her home. She would invite everyone. If she have, uh, she, if she could have her own way, she would simply invite the enjoy uh, the entire world to enjoy with her. The woman had the place, the plate at centerpiece at every small gathering she hosted. She would talk about the plate and tell how the care, how her mother carefully and lovingly made the plate. One night, at the end of one of her banquets, the energy of the room started winding down as more intimate conversation with the few guests who stayed beyond the dinner and merriments started. They insisted on helping with the cleanup. Plate after plate came through the kitchen doors toward the woman who received them on top of the sink. As she cleaned the plates one by one, she suddenly heard a plate smashing from outside the kitchen, smashing to the ground. She turned around and headed towards the other room. But as she was about to open, push the door open, someone pulled it open, revealed her mother's plate shattered on the floor near the kitchen door. She heard someone say, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. It simply slipped out of my hand. But she could not pay attention to that person. Even if she wanted to, her eyes were locked onto that scattered pieces of her mother's beautiful handiwork. She just started crying. After just a few seconds of sobbing, her friends started, started to comfort her. They said, it's okay. It has served its purpose. It's high time we get you a new one anyway. She shook her head and said to herself, it's okay. They do not know. They do not really know. She thought that although they have heard the story about the plate, they don't really feel the way, the same way she did about it. How important and how irreplaceable it really was. She cleaned the scattered pieces with dry cloth. She placed them on the table. She then started to put the big pieces together with a special glue. Some of her friends sat down beside her and started helping. These people cared for the woman. Even if they do not understand fully, they cared for the woman. That's why they helped. Because they loved her, they understood how important that play was to her. Others began to leave. They were the ones who knew the woman but simply did not love her enough to care about what was important to her. This story is similar to Christ and God. The world is a broken world. And when I say the world, I mean the people that live in it. We are broken creatures. We are broken people. The world too is broken. And as the plate is irreplaceable to the woman, this world too is irreplaceable to God. Someone, we somehow know, we grew up thinking that God takes pleasure in condemning people, in sending them to hell. But God does not. John begged to differ by saying, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him will not perish but have eternal life. That's John 3.16. He is carefully, patiently, lovingly putting the pieces of this broken world back together again. And now He calls on to those who believe Him and love Him to help Him. We believe that technology has always been a way by which God blesses the church and, a bit, and, and enables it to do its mission. The challenge for us today, my brothers and my sisters, is not, is to begin to look at your online life in a special, missional way. One week ago, I gave three young men a challenge to connect to just one person each. Just one person whom they will build a relationship with 
share their life with, and finally introduce them to the truth, to Jesus. Now, as your pastor, I'm giving you the same challenge. Connect to someone today. Life is simply too short. It's simply too short. And in this life, your call is clear to make disciples who will then in turn make disciples who will make disciples for our Lord Jesus Christ. Short term with one mission. Short life with one command to make disciples. There's a quote There's a quote that says, Faith is like Wi-Fi. It's invisible, but it has the power to connect you to what you need. Let's use this power, the power of technology, to connect people to what they really need. They really need the gospel. People need the Lord. Let's pray in that church. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your very clear message to us that we are to go and make disciples. Father, we are very thankful for the technology that you have allowed us, Lord, to use, that you have allowed the church, Lord, to be able to do its ministry, Father, in more innovative ways. Thank you for your son. Thank you for your love. And thank you for the fact that we teachers, we are just irreplaceable to you. Thank you that you are a God who is persistent in coming after us. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, in the way, the same way that we view ourselves as receiver of mercy and as receiver of your grace, Father, our challenge is to look at your children at the same way they too are in need of that mercy. They too are in need of that grace, Father. Finally, Father, we pray for your enabling. We pray for courage. We pray for boldness. And we pray for wisdom as we use the internet, as we use technology, as a media by whom, by which your message will be given out to the world. This is a broken world, but you love it still. Lord, work in us and bless your people. In fact, church, as you leave this place, go with the blessing and the courage and the might and the wisdom of your God, the God who loves you and comes after you. Give the same grace and love to someone. These are our prayers as a church. Our God, we lift you up we say we love you. We say we are victorious only because of you.